I, if you don't want to sit next to me, I understand that too. <laughs> Brian has to, but the rest of you have the choice. <laughs> so, I will bring this here. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I will call to order the January 10th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Scarborough. Um, why don't we stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to today's meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, this is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has a right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are being presented. Please notify the chairperson, myself, if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. We work from a prepared agenda, and we have one appeal as well as an approval of a draft decision from last May meeting. Um, in each instance, the burden uh, is upon the applicant to demonstrate the compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet the criterion. It is important to note that any, if any of the appeal or special exception criteria has not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. Keep in mind that our personal feelings on this are not relevant. We are really finding fact and determining whether those facts support the appeal, and that is our mission as a board. Um, with that, we will go into the roll call. Doreen? Peter Freilinger? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. Christine Snow? Present. Joe Doherty? Here. And Colin Here. Terrific. Um, first order of the agenda is, the, or the, technically the fourth, but the first order of, of the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our December 13th minute. Has everyone had a chance to read those? Oh. Oh, gotcha. We should do that now. Yes, that's right. We have two members who are not present tonight, David Bork and Richard Silkman. Um, therefore, we will be elevating our, our alternates to full voting members for the purpose of tonight's meeting. Got it. Terrific. Um, with that, I think everyone was here for the last meeting, right? Except for Michelle. Except Michelle. Okay, got it. Just thinking about voting for the minutes on, on this one. So, um, uh, With that, we will go to the approval of the minutes um, for December 13th. Have we had a chance to read the minutes? What? Any concerns? No. Did I just miss a meeting altogether? Is mm -hmm. that yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm really sorry. It's okay. It happens. I uh, sometimes we show up a half hour. I was late. like, no, I was here. <laughs> we talked about it. <laughs> Kyle was a full voting member. That's right. So, so yes, you were missing last meeting, but that's okay. I'm sorry, it's fine, not a problem. Um, so, okay, we've had a chance to look at the minutes. Are there any corrections or any corrections or amendments to the minutes? Could I have a motion to approve? Thank you, Kyle. Second. Thanks, Joe. Uh, all in favor, just show of hands. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. We then have the approval of the draft written decision for appeal number 2757, limited reduction of yard size, size residential appeal by Mike Richmond of Custom Concepts on behalf of Arthur and Donna Fossey, which we heard last. Has everyone had a chance to look at that? I have. Yep. The findings of fact materially are what we agreed to and are there. So yeah. if, I, if I could have a motion to approve. Christine, thank you. A second? I second that motion. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, then uh, if I could see a show of hands to approve the appeal. Thank you very much. That, approve, uh, that uh, uh, passes unanimously. We'll now move into tonight's business. Appeal number 2758, limited reduction of yard size appeal <laughs> by Knickerbocker Group on behalf of Robert and Carol Gustafson, 66 Scotto Hill Road, and uh, yes, thank you very much. If you could just state your name um, while you're up there. Hi, Leah Lipman from Knickerbocker Group. Terrific. And uh, the podium is yours. Please take us through. Okay. Um, we are asking for a reduction of the front yard setback um, in order to um, 
construct a porch on the back side of the property. Um, a little different. So the property is um, 66 Scotto Hill Road. And um, when we received the survey, which we were not expecting this, the um, the back of the property is actually in the front yard setback. It's, um, uh, I believe it's 42.5 feet from the, from the road. Um, so we're asking for um, the remaining 7.5 um, feet in order to build a back porch. Um, the back porch would be in fill in the corner of um, the house. And you can see um, it's 23 feet long and uh, about 10 and a half feet wide or in depth. Um, currently, there's um, a stone patio there um, in order to um, gain this outdoor seating space off of, there's a sunroom that it goes off of. Um, it makes sense to put it in this location. Um, this is the front of the house uh, and the side, which you can see from uh, Scott Hill, Hill Road. Um, so we wouldn't put a porch on this um, section of the house. It's actually a historic landmark. Um, so having the porch on the back makes more sense for um, my clients and also for the enjoyment of the property. So it would be on the back side here. So you can see the steps up. Um, they're an older brick step, and we'd be replacing that with a wood step up to a porch that walks out from the sunroom. And you can see the door currently. Um, so we're replacing that door with um, a larger opening, and we're planning on replacing the windows in that sunroom. Okay, any questions from the board? I have one. So your the, the, the reduction of yard size is due to the existing um, uh, uh, um, the existing non-compliance with the front yard uh, or, or, or the, the front yard uh, setback from the road. Yes. So uh, the house was built in the early 1800s, <laughs> so it predates zoning. Um, it's just the certainly sure. It's just the way it fell, um, and we weren't expecting it. Um, so you can see the porch there in the drawings. Um, so it would be covered porch on the first floor, and then um, a walkout from the second floor. But there's no setback variance required for the rear of the property or the side of the property. It doesn't. Would the location of the porch does not affect those setbacks? Gotcha. So Brian, this is always an interesting one for me. We've seen a lot of reduction of yard size variants for um, where there is a minor change to where the setback has already been effectively violated. But this is a new one where there's no change to the property where that setback lives. Um, well, technically there is. So think of it this way. Think if you reverse that house so that the front of the house was at 42 and a half feet mm -hmm. and not 50. And they wanted to put a porch on the front. Mm -hmm. It would be the same appeal. It, they, they would come for the same appeal. It's just that in this case, the porch can't meet the 50 foot front setback because it's attached to a house that's already encroaching into mm -hmm. the setback. So that 10 feet of reduction for a front yard setback, it is odd. We don't generally see this, yeah. but it's just sort of flip flop from what you would normally see, but it still applies because yeah. I can't issue it. The way, the way Scarborough's ordinance is written, unlike some towns, not all towns, but some towns, some towns would say, well, if it doesn't increase the nonconformity, then you can permit it. Yeah. Our ordinance simply says any, any portion of a building that's built, any building or portion of a building that's built must conform with the setbacks. So you can't conform with the setbacks if you attach, I mean, they could detach it and set it back to 50 right. feet, but it wouldn't really be functional. No, that'd be ridiculous, so, exactly. So in, in order to attach it to the house, which is what you would normally want to do, 
they're actually encroaching, still encroaching into that 50 foot front yard. Okay. Got it. Okay. I have a question. Um, in reading some of the materials, I understand that the, the house as it's currently configured, there's some challenge with entry into the house. It was talk about, I think it was an 18 inch step. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and it would be eliminated in this, can, in this process. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, so um, I don't know if you can see it in maybe the next building section. Um, well, you can see it here. So right here, we're replacing the door. If, if we go back and look at the existing photo, there's a, a single door in the corner there. And in order to get there, um, you have to go up uh, stone steps. Um, so basically, we are eliminating the stone portion and having a more regular um, stair with wood going up to the porch. And then from the porch into the sunroom, um, which would have that larger opening, um, that would be um, almost at the same grade. I think it, there might be a six inch step there. Um, so the access will be easier than on that stone patio and those stone steps, which have heaved over the course of time. And that's the, I believe that's the main entrance for uh, the property. Um, the garage is out back. There's an entrance from the garage into the sunroom, um, but most guests park in the, in the driveway and walk up that current patio step area. Does that answer the question? It does, thank you. Any other questions? Michelle? I might have a question for you or Brian, but do we need to take into account that this is a historic, like does that have any thing that we need to think about? No, it's, it's, it's not on the National Historic Register or anything like that. Okay. So this is, it's just that it's historic because it was one of the, one of the oldest houses, I think, in Scarborough. And, and to uh, Slippin's point, it, it was built long before setbacks or zoning or anything was thought of. So that's, again, one of the criteria is that it predates 1991, and it certainly does that. And Brian, for mine, and again, not relevant for this appellant, just for, for our, our benefit. Um, if it were on the National Historic Register, would we deal with anything uh, along that, or would that fall to the planning board or to some other area? It would fall to the applicant to to um, follow any of the, the rules or conditions that yeah. were put in place. And I'm, I'm by no means an, uh, an historic uh, buildings expert, I, uh, but there, in order to maintain that listing or that, that certification that you're on the registry, a historical, I don't know if it's the state historical preservation office or somebody has to weigh in on any changes that you propose to make. But it wouldn't be the zoning board. Presumably. It wouldn't be the zoning board. And it's Good. usually, it, it just is confined to the front or like what's facing the street or, or what people can see. It usually doesn't refer to the back of the house. Gotcha. Um, and sometimes they allow for like this garage was built later. So that wouldn't be, that wouldn't fall under that. Got it. Yeah, and, and again, not anything for your appeal. Just wanted to right. clarify stuff for us as we go forward. So that's fine. Anything else? Okay, um, then I'll ask you to um, uh, read in your responses to the uh, the um, to, to how your appeal meets the, the criteria listed. Um, this is part of the process. So um, the first one is uh, the existing buildings or structures on a lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential appeal is requested were erected prior to July 3, 1991, or the lot is vacant, non-conforming lot of record. If you could just read in your response. Um, it's for, it's for the, this is for the record. Which page is it? It's just your application. I think it's page four is mine, is what I have, so. But are you going to start at A? Um, I don't think we need to start with A. No, we, we, we just go for the okay. elements of the appeal, so, yeah, so. A, so A? Yes, no, no for B or C, right, C1. C1. Okay, 
Okay. Um, the house was built in the early 1800s and is considered a landmark in the area prior to any zoning regulations. The siting of the house on the lot is non-conforming and the addition of a porch anywhere else around the house would take away from the historical authentic architecture of the house. Terrific. Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The sunroom doubles as the primary entry to the house. The sunroom floor is being raised 18 inches to eliminate a dangerous transition inside the house between the kitchen and the sunroom. The new elevation between grade and first floor will now be a little over five feet. This addition will allow easier and safer access to the house while providing protection from the element at the entrance. The porch right outside the sunroom brings the outdoor space closer to the center of the daily activities, greatly reduces fall risk when transitioning between indoor and outdoor spaces, and offers a shaded outdoor area on the south side of the house. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. It would not be practical to build the proposed porch away from the existing house. The impacts and uh, number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. The proposed addition is on the rear of the house, not visible from the road. The essential character of the neighborhood will not be impacted by this addition. And number five, finally, the, the applicant has not commi commenced construction of the enlargement um, for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested, so the board is not considering an after-the-fact application. Correct. Construction of the porch has not started. Terrific. Okay, with that, are there any public comments or were there any public comments received? Um, I only received, I received an email from a, an interested neighbor uh, who, who I was happy to forward the application to and I received no comments back. Got it. And... No, thank you. Okay, got it. Just making sure. Thanks. Just making sure. Thank you very much. With that, um, with no further public comment, the public comment is closed, um, and we will begin our deliberations. Um, we'll start with uh, number one, and we'll just go around the horn here. Joe, do you want to start with number one? Sure. The existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to 1991. Um, as the applicant has stated, the house was built in the early 1800s prior to the uh, um, current zoning laws. Yeah. No, no further comment, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, then uh, by show of hands, this will be pretty quick, I think. By show of hands, do we agree that number one has been met? That's unanimous. Um, number two, Cal. Um, number two, the, re the request for reduction reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. I think this criteria is met. Um, the, um, the reduction is necessary to allow a porch to be built on the back of the house. I think um, the presence of a porch <coughs> allows the property owner to use and enjoy the property and essentially the same manner as similar properties. Uh, so I think that this criteria is met. The one comment I make here, and, and this might be Brian as much as you as you help future applicants, I, I think um, it's clear by inference that it's, it's met here. It would be great when applicants respond to this question that they talk about other applicable uses in the neighborhood so that we have sort of more of a, uh, an obvious logical flow. But I agree with Kyle. Um, you know, the addition of a porch is something that other folks would have, um, and, uh, and and I don't see anything that would that would not allow us to agree with this. Brian, do we know what um, zone this is in? Yeah, it's in the rural farm district. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, by show of hands, do we agree that this criteria has been met? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, 
due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures in the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement <laughs> in conformance. Again, this relates to the original conversation we had. Making this effectively in conformance would require airlifting the house seven and a half feet back um, and, and into the full conformance with the front setback, which is absurd. Um, and, and I think we can agree that absurdity is not required as consideration for whether or not you meet the criteria for reduction of yard size. Um, by show of hands, do we have a agreement with this has been met? There. Thank you very much. Unanimous. Michelle, number four. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from the greater, from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Um, yeah, so it's going to be in the back and it's not going to be visible from the road. Um, sounds like it's actually going to be potentially in a visual improvement um, and um, does not seem to impact the general neighborhood. Um, but I would like to have seen or known about any of the, you know, um, adjacent houses and that kind of style. That's I'm not familiar with this area, but yeah. um, it, this has been met in my opinion. Gotcha. Any other comments on this one? Then a show of hands of the applicant met the criteria for this. Unanimous. Thank you. And finally, um, uh, Christine. I think this is easy. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. And the applicant um, applied for their permit and found out the need for this and fulfilled their obligation. Would agree. Any other comments? And by show of hands, do we feel the applicant has met this? And that's unanimous as well. Um, then may I have a motion to approve appeal number 2758, the limited reduction of yard size appeal for uh, the Gustafsons at 66 Scott Oak Hill Road. Uh, motion to approve. Joe, thank you. Second. Christine B. to the punch. Second to Christine. Uh, all in favor, let's call the roll. Joe Doherty. Yes. Cal Noonan. Yes. Peter Freilinger. Yes. Michelle Stevenson. Yes. And Christine Snow. Aye. And the appeal is approved. Thank you very much. The one comment we would make, and, and again, for um, uh, the Knickerbocker group, it, for the questions that we that discuss um, uh, related uses in the neighborhood, we would appreciate to have some comparison to other homes <coughs> um, and, and a discussion of that as part of the complete application package. Obviously, in this case, very straightforward, but just in the future, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, any comments? I'm really yes. sorry that I missed December's meeting. <laughs> we were surprised. I, I don't ever do. No, the September was, although you did mention that, and I was like, oh, it's great. It's a few months back. <laughs> well, my one comment, I would like to congratulate formally our Brian Longstaff for winning oh, his municipal, yeah. main municipal association Planning Award. Congratulations. Well, Congratulations, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. Um, we're, we're always, we are without a doubt pleased and, and lucky to have you as our guide and uh, conciliary on this. So thank you very much. I would agree that you're very lucky to have me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, so Brian mentioned earlier, for those of us who are waiting to figure out whether we're on, um, been approved for renewals, Apparently, the appointments committee met today. That means probably next week the town councilor, in two weeks, the town council will approve what they had, uh, did. Um, and then, so next meeting, we will approve um, our chair and vice chair for 2024. Um, so, thanks very much for all that. Richard is, I think, gone for three meetings? I believe, yes. Three months? Yeah, three months. Um, and uh, David was just, he's fallen victim to the multiple viruses that are circulating through town. Um, I'm not sure which one he has. It wasn't COVID, but uh, one of them. So we'll, we'll see him back next month. Sorry. So. 
Yeah, so, Mr. Chair, I, I think this is a great example of why it's important. The alternate positions are important to this yeah. board. For anybody that's out there and thinking maybe they'd be interested in, you know, signing up for this, and, and maybe the only open position would be an alternate position, it's, it's essential to have alternates uh, to, for this very reason. Exactly. And, and Brian mentioned on email today correctly that four people make a quorum, but five people make a full board, and we I think we owe it to the town and to the applicants to get a full board whenever we can. So, um, so exactly, this was a great example of where we could get five together even though we had two absences and, and, and did the right thing. And for folks who are wondering how much of a time commitment is, you've got a chairman who's going to run this thing quickly as possible, and we're going to get out of here in 27 minutes. So if I could get a motion. <laughs> if I could get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. For Michelle, second. I second that All in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know what's funny is Brian